Today we'll continue with uh, solving the next problem. Okay, this is the sixth problem. So just go through it and understand what is given in the problem, and we'll solve the problem accordingly based on the required parameters using the same principle, whatever we have used uh, for the uh, previous problems. Okay. Uh, you just go through it. A pre stress concrete beam of inverted T section has the following dimensions. Okay, the type of section is what? It is an inverted T section. Okay, it is a inverted T section. Let me write the figure for the same so that it will be helpful uh, in understanding the dimensions as well as in solving the problem. Okay, he says that the type of section is inverted t section inverted t section okay i'll write the figure inverted t section Okay, so this is the inverted T section. Has the following dimensions: rib is 300 by 900, and flange is 300 by 600. So this is the rib having dimensions 300. Okay, then the depth is 900. Nine hundred. Next, flange dimensions are three hundred by six hundred. Thickness is three hundred. And width of the flange is given as six hundred mm. Six hundred mm. OK. So these are all the dimensions given. So moving ahead with the problem, the beam is simply supported over a span of 15 meter. The type of beam is a simply supported beam. And span of the beam is 15 meter, 15 meter, okay. The beam is post tensioned by three fresnet cables, each contained 12 wires of 7 mm diameter. Okay. The, uh, the beam is post tensioned with three fresnet cables, each contained the 12 wires of 7 mm diameter. Okay. Fresnet cables uh, means it is a bundle of cable. Bundle of n number of cables. Like this, you might have seen practically. This is most commonly uh, used type of cable in uh, construction technology in PS uh, in PSE members. Okay, this kind of cable. Okay. So this is called as fresnet cable. Okay, he says that there are three such a kind of fresnet cables and each contained 12 wires of 7 mm diameter placed at 150 mm from soffit of the beam at mid span. Okay. So here let me write three number of resonant cables. One, two, three. Okay. Three number of resonant cables. Each contained 12 wires of 7 mm diameter. So in each fresnet cable, there are 12 number of wires. Okay. 12 number of wires. 
OK, next. Placed at 150 mm from soffit of the beam at mid span. OK. From soffit it is. 150 mm. So understanding the problem is very important. OK, if you understand the problems clearly, then you will get to know. What is the solution of the problem? How the problem has to be solved? OK. 150 mm. OK, the fascinant cables are placed at 150 mm from soffit of the beam at mid span. OK. Then what else is given? If the initial pressure is 1 kN per mm square, calculate the maximum uniform distributed load. You have to calculate maximum uniformly distributed load okay that it can carry if maximum compressive stress in concrete is limited to 15 mpa and tensile stress is limited to 1 mpa and one more thing is given there is 15 percent of loss of pre stresses okay he has given the stresses resultant stresses at top fiber and the bottom fiber what are the resultant stresses given? See here. If the maximum compressive stress in concrete is limited to 15 MPa and tensile stress is limited to 1 MPa, uh, we all know that. It is a well known fact that the top fiber is subjected to the compressive stresses and bottom fiber of the beam is subjected to tensile stresses if it is simply supported correct huh? therefore he has given limiting compressive stress and limiting tensile stress okay let me write the figure again so this is the reference line This is a reference reference line. As we all know that compressive stresses will take place at the top fiber and he has given limiting compressive stress value at the top fiber. How much it is 15 MPa and compressive stress is represented by positive sign in ESE. So right up the reference line. OK, the limiting compressive stress is F superior. OK, superior means the top fiber. OK, resultant stress at the top fiber. How much it is given? 15 MPa, 15 Newton per mm square. OK, and. The tensile stresses is limited to 1 MPa, only 1 Newton per mm square at that bottom fiber. OK, this is F inferior. It is given as 1 MPa, OK. Now, the question is to find what is the maximum UDL that can be applied on the beam, okay, with this limiting values, okay. The stress at the top fiber should not exceed 15 Newton per mm square. Stress at the bottom fiber should not exceed 1 Newton per mm square or 1 megapascal. This is, that is a question, okay. Here, everything is given, correct? Every data required is given except the load. The area of the cross sectional area of the inverted T beam you can calculate, cross sectional area of the cables you can calculate, pre stress in the cable is given. Okay. Pre stress multiplied by area of the cable will give pre stressing force, P is known, moment of inertia you can calculate, correct? Eccentricity also you can locate. Every parameters are given only. The unknown factor is load. OK, and result of stresses are given. OK, let me write the given data below. So the, the dimensions of the inverted TB I have already mentioned in the diagram. I will not read uh, uh, once again in the, in the data. The beam is simply supported over a span of 15 meter. Length of the beam is 15 meter. Then 
post tensioned with three fresnet cables, each contain 12 wires of 7 mm diameter. Okay, you can find the area of the pre-stressing wire. Okay, area of the pre-stressing wire you can find by that data. Area of pre-stressing wire. Processing why you can calculate. See, there are three number of fascinate cables and each containing how many numbers? 12 numbers of 7 mm dia wires. First, you find area of one wire. Dia of each wire is 7 mm. Area of each wire will be pi d square by 5, pi into 7 square by 4. Now you got area of one wire. Okay into there are 12 numbers of wires in each fractionate cable. If you multiply by 12, then you will get area of each fractionate cable. Again, there are three such a kind of fractionate cables. Again, if you multiply by three, then you will get total area of the pre-stressing wire. Total area of the pre-stressing wires. OK, so this 12 represents Number of wires in each resonant cable. Uh, three um, represents number of resonant cables. By doing this, you will get total area of the processing steel. Okay, by this we'll get total area of the pre-stressing steel. If we calculate the answer, so it is 1385.44 mm square. All of you, please cross check the answer. Cross check the answer. Now, this is over. Placed at 150 mm from surface of the beam. That I have written in the diagram. Then what else? If the initial pre-stress is 1 kN per mm square, pre-stress in the wire, pre-stress in the wire is given, pre-stress in wire is how much? It is 1 kN per mm square. It is given as 1 kN per mm square, S. Yes. So you convert this into newton per mm square, so it will be how much? 1000. Newton per mm square. OK. Now, area of the pre-stressing steel is known. The stress in the wire is known. Stress multiplied by area will give the force which is acting in the cable. That is pre-stressing force that is acting in the cable. Therefore, pre-stressing force is equal to, therefore, pre-stressing force or pre-stressing force V is equal to, okay? So area, stress multiplied by area. Stress in the wire is stress into area. Stress in the wire, it is given as 1000 Newton per mm square. Therefore, 1000 multiplied by area of the wire, just now we have calculated, that is 1000, 385.44. So by this we'll get processing force. The answer, if you calculate, it will be 1.385 into 10 power 6 Newton. So this is the processing force. This is the processing force. And then so we have to calculate uniform distributed load WQ we want. OK, then maximum compression stress in the concrete is limited to 15 MPa. That also I have mentioned in the diagram. And uh, tensile stress is limited to 1 MPa. That also I have mentioned in the diagram. Now, to solve for this WQ, OK, we will utilize these two conditions. What is the first condition? First condition is maximum compressive stress. That is F superior is equal to 15 Newton per mm square. And second condition is, F inferior maximum tensile stress is equal to 
one Newton per mm current. Utilizing these two conditions, we can solve for unknown factor that is WQ, that is the load that can be carried by the beam. Okay, now case one, let me write case one. Case one. What is the case one? What is the first condition? F superior is equal to 15 Newton per mm square. F superior is equal to 15 Newton per mm square. Okay, this is what the condition given. And formula for calculating F superior. Okay, formula for calculating the extreme fiber stresses is known. Okay, what is the formula? Let me go back. Yes, at the in the second class I have explained. Correct? Yes. Here. What is the formula for calculating F superior? P by A minus P by Z T plus M G by Z T plus M Q by Z T. That is the formula for calculating F superior. F inferior is P by A plus P by Z B. Only the sign will change us. Okay. From the second term. Okay. Now I will write the same formula now. Yes. Okay. F inferior, F superior is equal to 15 Newton per mm square. F superior is nothing but P by A. Okay, I'll write the same formula now. Minus P by Z T plus M G by Z T. M G is moment due to self weight or moment due to dead load plus M Q by Z T is equal to plus 15 Newton per mm square. Compressive stresses, he, he says that compressive stresses, compressive stresses is represented by positive sign in PSA. So plus 15, this is the first condition given. Okay. Now, every parameters are known except the MQ, correct? Pre-stressing force we have just now calculated area of the cross section we have, we can calculate them all dimensions are known okay then uh, we have to calculate eccentricity and section modulus that we can calculate okay we have to calculate eccentricity and section modulus and uh, moment due to self-weight also we can calculate only the unknown parameter is mq after getting the mq that is moment due to live load you can calculate what is the live load okay using that moment value Okay, now let me calculate one by one. We just now we have calculated it is 1.385 into 10 power 6 Newton. Now A is area of cross section. A is equal to area of cross section is equal to we can calculate the area dimensions are given. Area of the web plus area of flange. Area of web is 300 by 900 and 300 by 600. 300 by 900 plus 300 by 600. Okay, by this we'll get uh, the area. It is 40 450,000 mm square. Check the answer, please. 450,000 mm square. Okay, please solve the problem. And cross check with the answers. If you are getting any different answers, let me know. We will correct it and uh, we will solve. 450,000 mm square. Okay. Now, in terms of meter square, so this area is required uh, in terms of meter square for calculating the sulfate. Okay. In terms of meter square, it is 450,000 into 10 power minus 3 whole square. Okay. So, finally, it is 0. 4, 5, 
meter square is the area okay then what else is required you need the eccentricity correct you need the eccentricity what is eccentricity eccentricity is let me write the diagram let me write the centroidal axis for this figure if g is the centroid of the figure okay if g is the centroid of the figure centroidal axis will be this is the centroidal axis what is eccentricity eccentricity is distance between the centroid of the precessing force to that of centroid of the figure so this is the eccentricity now we want this eccentricity value to calculate this eccentricity you should know what is the distance of this centroid of the figure from bottom fiber okay so distance of centroid of whole figure from the bottom fiber minus this 150 will give this eccentricity now we have to calculate yb correct this yb minus this 150 will give eccentricity okay distance between centroid of the figure to that of centroid of the precessing force okay now task is to find yb that is to find centroid of the figure from the bottom fiber okay now yb is equal to you all know how to find the centroid yb is equal to yb is equal to so there are two components generalized formula for yb is sigma a y by sigma a okay so there are two components therefore if you expand this a1 y1 plus a2 y2 divided by a1 plus a2 okay so by this you will get the centroid of the figure where a1 and a2 are the area of rectangle 1 and rectangle 2. let me call uh, this flange as rectangle 1 web portion as rectangle number 2 okay therefore area of rectangle 1 a1 is equal to area of rectangle 1 a1 is equal to what is the flange dimensions given it is 3 uh, 300 by 600 correct so 600 by 300 uh, it is 180,000 mm square then a2 is equal to area of the web portion uh, the dimensions of the web is 300 by 900 correct 300 by 900 so it is 270,000 mm square then you need to calculate y1 y1 is nothing but distance of centroid of rectangle 1 from base it is 300 by 2 directly 300 by 2 150 mm then y2 is nothing but distance of centroid of rectangle 2 from base from base from base distance of centroid of this rectangle 2 is 300 plus depth divided by 2 300 plus 900 divided by 2 300 plus 900 by 2 so 900 by 2 is 450 plus 300 answer is 750 mm okay now you can calculate yb by substituting all the values therefore yb is equal to yb is equal to a1 y1 180,000 into y1 150 plus a2 y2 270,000 into y2 is 750 all divided by a1 plus a2 180,000 plus 270,000 therefore yb is if we calculate it is 510 mm 
check the answer by 10 millimeter. Now you have got distance of centroid from the bottom fiber of the beam. How much you, you how much you got? You got it as 510 mm. Okay. If you know YB, you can easily calculate YT, correct? Distance of the centroid from top fiber you can calculate easily. Okay. So total depth is 900 plus 300, 1200. 1200 minus Y10. If you do, you will get YT. Okay, you will get YT. Let, uh, let us calculate it later. Or else now, now only we will calculate, no problem. YT is equal to, YT is equal to, total depth is, how much? 300 plus 900. 300 plus 900 minus YB. YB is 510. If we calculate, it is 690 mm. 1200 minus 510. So here it is 690 mm. Okay. Now you can calculate eccentricity, required eccentricity. Eccentricity E is equal to 510 minus this 150 will give distance between centroid of the processing force to that of centroid of the whole figure. Okay. Distance of centroid from base is 510. Distance of centroid of the processing force from base is 150. That 510 minus 150 will give eccentricity therefore eccentricity is equal to therefore eccentricity e is equal to by 10 minus 150 uh, answer is 360 mm 360 mm okay now you got eccentricity. What else is required? You require ZT. Okay. Structural modulus with respect to tau fiber. We know the formula for ZT. ZT is equal to I by YT. Correct? Huh? So this is what the formula we have. Again, YT is known, but moment of inertia I is not known that we have to calculate. We'll calculate now. We'll calculate now. I is equal to we know that moment of inertia I is equal to IgG plus A into H squared, where IgG is moment of inertia of component from its about its own central axis. Area is uh, A is area of each and individual component, and H is distance between centered of the whole figure to that of centered of the individual figures. Okay. Now a1 and A2 are known. A1 and A2 are known. A1 is how much? 180,000. A2 is 270,000. Okay. And A1, A2 we have calculated already. H1 and H2 we have to calculate. H1 and H2. What is H1? H1 is H1 is distance between centroid of the rectangle centroid of the rectangle to the top centroid of the whole figure. This is H1. How we will calculate? I think it is equal to eccentricity only. From the base, distance of the centroid of the whole figure is 510. Okay. And center of the rectangle one from base is 150, that is 300 divided by 2. So 510 minus 150. Okay. Nothing but 360. 360 mm. Same, same value. As it of eccentricity. So 510. 510 minus 360. Sorry, minus uh, 150. 
minus 150 that is 360 mm okay then h2 what is h2 let me show in the diagram h2 is distance between the centroid of the rectangle to g2 to the top centered of whole figure this is h2 okay h2 is distance of distance between centered of the rectangle to the top centered of the whole figure what is distance of rectangle to from the base it is 300 plus 900 divided by 2 300 plus 450 that is 750 okay 750 is the distance of centered of rectangle to from base minus distance of centered of whole figure okay 750 minus this 510 will give h2 let me write the detailed calculation here h2 is equal to 300 plus 300 plus 900 divided by 2 minus 510. If you do, you will get the value of H2. If you calculate how much? 750. 750 or how much? 300 plus 300 plus 900 divided by 2. It is 750. 750 minus 510. 750 minus 510. If you do, the answer is. Two forty, correct? Two forty mm. Now substituting all the values. So IgG is nothing but formula we have to use BDQ by ton. Therefore, moment of inertia I is equal to. Initially, we will write the calculation for the first rectangle, component one. BDQ by ton. IgG is BDQ by ton. For rectangle one, B is. 600 d is 300 600 into 300 q by 12 okay 600 into 300 q by 12 plus a h square a1 h1 square a1 is 180000 h1 is 360 square this is the calculation for rectangle one similarly for rectangle two igg pdq by 12 rectangle to with the b is 300 depth is 900 300 into 900 cube divided by 12 300 into 900 cube by 12 plus a2 h2 square a2 is 270000 h2 is 240 square by this we get moment of inertia calculate the answer to calculate 5 point 845 into 10 power 10 mm raised to 4. 5.845 into 10 power 10 mm raised to 4 is the answer. Now, knowing the moment of inertia and yt distance of center from the top fiber, you can calculate zt. Therefore, zt is equal to, therefore, Z t is equal to i by y t is equal to 5.845 into 10 power 10 divided by y t is how much 690. So answer is 84.72 into 10 power 6 mm cube. This is what the answer. Okay, now we got the T value. Okay, we are going to, we know the pre-stressing force now. We know the area of cross section. We know the section modulus Z T. Then what else we have to calculate? We have to calculate Mg. What is Mg? Moment due to sulfate. Okay, moment due to sulfate. Here you write moment due to sulfate. Okay, that is Mg. First, you calculate the sulfate. Sulfate is equal to 
density multiplied by area or area cross sectional area multiplied by density cross sectional area we have calculated that is a1 and a2 we have calculated summation of both will give total cross sectional area correct summation of both will give total cross sectional area uh, i think we have calculated ah yes here area cross sectional we have 0 0.45 meter square 0 0.45 at the beginning only we have calculated 0 0.45 be very careful in this particular step students because here the mistakes that you do is while substituting the area sometimes you will substitute area of the pre-stressing wires okay you will substitute 1385 that is the first uh, kind of mistake that you will do Normally, the second kind of mistake that you will be doing is substituting the area in terms of meter square. You will substitute the same area in terms of millimeter square instead. Okay, that is the uh, second wrong thing that normally you will do. Okay, be careful here area of the section and that should be in terms of meter square because density is in terms of kilo newton per meter cube. Therefore, WG sulfate is 10.8 kilonewton per meter. 10.8 kilonewton per meter. Okay. Now you can calculate sulfate moment easily. Therefore, sulfate moment WG is equal to now sulfate intensity of sulfate is 10.8 kilonewton per meter. Length of the beam is given as 15 meter. We can calculate moment due to sulfate. Therefore, therefore, mg is equal to WL square by 8. That is WG L square by 8. WG is 10.8 into 15 square by 8. Therefore, mg is equal to if we calculate it is 303.75 kilonewton meter or 303.75 into 10 power 6 newton millimeter okay now all parameters are known in this equation In this equation, all parameters are known except MQ. MQ is the unknown parameter here. So that we can calculate. Substitute all the values here. Okay, in the RHS 15, MQ is only the unknown factor that you can calculate now. Substitute. So here, and one more important thing, very, very important thing. At the last of the uh, at the last point of the problem. He mentioned that assume 15 percent loss of tree stresses. Assume 15 percent loss of tree stresses. I will be discussing about loss of tree stresses in detail in the next model, model two. Model T, model two is of uh, study on loss of tree stresses only. I will discuss in detail. Okay, there are a few losses that will occur. Uh, in the stresses that is lost due to uh, the anchor slip, lost due to shrinkage. OK. Uh, so many kinds of losses will occur. I'll be discussing in detail in the next model. So here he says that there are 15 percent of loss of stresses. There is 15 percent of loss of stresses. Means if initial stress is P. If Initial pre stress is P. Okay. Then in that initial pre stress, he says that loss of pre stress is 15%. Loss of Pre-stress 
is 15 percent which is nothing but 15 by 100 p nothing but 0 0.15 p so in total pre-stressing force of p if there is 0 0.15 p loss remaining is 0 0.85 p this is what the effective pre-stressing force that will be there in the cables okay this is the effective processing force that will be there in the cables therefore in this formula no in this formula we have to substitute 0 0.85 p in the place of initial pressures p okay so let me call this as equation number one therefore equation one becomes therefore therefore equation one becomes so in place of p you need to write 0 0.85 that's it so 0 0.85 p by a 0 0.85 p by a minus p e by z t 0 0.85 p e by z t then plus m g by z t plus MQ by Z T in the RHS. What we have is 15. Yes, 15 is equal to 15. Okay, we we'll substitute all the values. Therefore, 0 0.85 into processing force P. How much we have calculated? It is 1.385 into 10 power 6. 1.385. into 10 power 6 divided by total cross section area 450,000 okay 180,000 plus 270,000 minus 0 0.85 PE. PE is 1.385 into 10 power 6 eccentricity how much we got eccentricity yes it is 360 mm 360 mm 360 Divided by section modulus the T. Uh, how much we got? 84.7 to 10 power 6. 84.7 to 10 power 6 plus mg by the T. mg, how much we got? 303.75 to 10 power 6. 303.75 into 10 power 6 divided by 84.72 into 10 power 6 plus mq by z t 84.72 to 10 power 6 is equal to 15. so in this equation only the mq that is moment due to line load is unknown that you can solve if we solve for mq answer is 1.169 into 10 power 9 Newton millimeter. This is what the answer. In terms of kilo Newton meter, MQ is equal to 1169 into 10 power 6 Newton millimeter. I have already written the above value. So it becomes 1169 kilometer meter okay now mq value is 1169 kilometer meter considering the first condition considering first condition what is the first condition maximum compressive stress is limited to 15 newton per mm square similarly we can obtain the value of mq by considering the second condition that is maximum tensile stress is limited to 1 megapascal, 1 newton per mm square. Case 2. Let me take case 2. Case 2. Case 2. What he says is maximum tensile stress. Means at the bottom fiber. Maximum. Tensile stress 
that is f inferior is limited to one newton per mm square. Not only one, it is minus one newton per mm square. Sign convention for tensile stresses negative sign. Okay, so f inferior formula we know. <coughs> What is the F inferior formula? P by A plus P E by Z B minus M Z by Z B minus M Q by Z B. Let me read the same formula. P by A. Then plus P E by Z B. Then minus mz by zb minus mq by zb is equal to minus 1 is equal to minus 1 okay so considering the 15 percent loss of three stresses this formula can be rewritten as considering considering 15 percent loss of Three stresses, three stresses. The formula can be written as 0 0.85 P by A plus 0 0.85 P E by Z B minus M G by Z B minus M Q by Z B is equal to minus one. OK. So all the things we have already calculated except the ZB value. OK, section modulus with respect to the bottom paper that we can easily calculate. We know that ZB is equal to I by YB. OK, moment of inertia I is how much? It is 5.845 into 10 power 10. 5.845 into 10 power 10 divided by YB is how much we got? 510. Huh? YB 510. 5, 510. So ZB, if we calculate, the answer is, let me check the answer. It is 114.60 into 10 power 6. MMQ. 14.6 So rest all the values are known. Just substitute and get the answer. So equation two becomes equation two or three. So let me call this as equation number three. Therefore, equation three becomes equation V becomes 0.85 P. P is 1.385 to 10 power 6 divided by plus area 450,000 plus 0 0.85 P 1.385 into 10 power 6 into eccentricity 360 mm divided by ZB is 114.5 6 into 10 power 6 minus mg by zb mg common due to sulfate we have calculated already that we call it as 30 3.75 into 10 power 6 divided by 114.6 into 10 power 6 minus mq by zb 114.6 into 10 power 6 is equal to minus 1 by this also, you'll get one more value of M cube moment due to light load. Solving, you get the answer as 534.46 into 10 power 6 newton millimeter. In terms of kilo newton meter, M cube is equal to 534.46 kilonewton meter. OK. Now moving to the question. What is the question here? Question is. 
calculate the maximum uniformly distributed load that it can carry if the maximum compression stress in concrete is limited to 15 MPa and tensile stress is limited to 1 MPa. Now we have calculated two lay load moments. Considering maximum compression stress, we got one value. Considering maximum compression stress, we got MQ as 1.169 or 1169 kilonewton meter. Considering maximum tensile stress, we got the answer as 534.5. 46 kilonewton meter. The question is to find maximum UDL that can be applied on the beam. Okay, so we know that. See in these two moments. Okay, which moment has to be considered for calculating the load? That is the question here. Correct. So for calculating the lay load, you need to consider the lesser value of the moment that is obtained by these two conditions because. If you consider higher value, that is 1169 kilometer, the tensile stress will, will get exceeded beyond the limiting value. If you consider this higher value, okay? Because with respect to this tensile stress, 534.46 kilometer meter is the maximum, maximum moment that can be carried by the beam. That is why you have to consider lesser value among these two values. OK. Lesser value among these two values. OK, if you consider higher value. So other stress, this will exceed it will go beyond one. OK, if you consider this 534.46. The compressive stress will be lesser than 15. If it is OK, if it is less than limiting value but it should not be greater than the limiting value that is mentioned in the problem. Therefore, considering the least value from both the calculations, therefore, from both cases, both cases, considering, considering the least value, least value, of MQ. That is MQ is a, which is the least value? 534.46 kilonewton meter is the least value or 536.46 into 10 power 6 newton kilonewton. Considering this, we, have, we can estimate what is the lie load. Okay, so we know that MQ is equal to what is the formula? WQ L square by 8. Okay, MQ is 536.46 into 10 power 6 is equal to WQ is unknown that we have to find out into length of the beam. How much it is given? 15 meter, 15 squared by 8. If you solve the answer, we will get the lay load as 19 kilo newton per meter. This is the answer, which means that the Intensity of UDL is how much? 19 kilonewton per meter. You can apply a UDL of WQ of 19 kilonewton per meter so as to satisfy these two limiting conditions of the stresses. Okay, so to this, uh, uh, we have completed this problem. If you have any doubts, you can ask. OK, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the next problem. Seventh one. Both read. An unsymmetrical I section beam. OK. Is used to support an imposed load of 2 kilonewton per meter. WQ is given over a span of 8 meter. Length is given 8 meter. The sectional details are top flange, 300 wide, 60 thick, bottom flange, 100 wide, 60 thick, and web dimensions are given. Thickness is 80 mm, depth is 400. Okay, these are all the sectional dimensions required for unsymmetrical I section. Next, moving ahead, at the quarter of the span, effective pre force of 100 kN 
is located at 50 mm okay at 50 nm it is not m it is mm kindly correct it 50 mm from the circuit of the beam okay estimate the stresses at the quarter span section of the beam for the following conditions pre stress plus sulfate pre stress plus sulfate plus like load okay so we have to estimate the resultant stresses at quarter of the span resultant stresses at quarter of the span this problem is 90% similar to the earlier problem that we have solved i think it is second problem second problem yes here we have the second problem okay so if you compare uh, this seventh problem and the second problem you can see that an unsymmetrical i section of sectional dimensions 300 wide 60 mm beam bottom plane should be all the sectional dimensions are same only 300 mm wide 60 mm 60 mm thick okay the sectional dimensions are same only okay then At the quarter of the span, effective processing force of 100 kN is located at 50 mm from surface of the wind. This is only the change in the data. When you compare uh, second problem and this seventh problem, okay, change in the data is the magnitude of the processing force is 100 kN located at 50 mm from surface of the beam. Where exactly? At the quarter of the span at the quarter of the span okay let me write the solution here now the question is to find uh, the resultant stresses at the quarter of the span to find the resultant stress what are the data required to find the result of stresses, you need uh, the value of P by A, P by Z, T, M G by Z, T, and M Q by Z, T. Correct? Huh? All these parameters are required. The effective, the, uh, uh, the magnitude of the processing force is 100 into 10 power 3. Here, processing force is 100 kilonewton. Okay. And eccentricity is it is not given, it is the uh, that we have to calculate that we have already calculated in second problem eccentricity. Eccentricity we got it as 194 mm. So it will be the same only. This eccentricity will be same only because all the sectional dimensions are similar. Okay, they are all similar. Here also that processing force is 100 kilonewton is located at 50 mm from surface of the beam surface of the beam so here also same thing here also same thing 100 kilonewton located 50 mm from surface of the beam okay therefore eccentricity will be value will be the same only whatever we have calculated in this particular problem 194 mm only okay next which means that p Processing force, area of the cross section, eccentricity, and section modulus. Section modulus mainly depends on dimensions of the figure. The dimensions are similar, similar only. So ZT, ZB value also be same only. These values will also be same only. Okay. Only the difference in value is in MG and MQ value. Okay. Moment due to cell weight and moment due to lay load values change will be in moment due to cell fit and moment due to lay load how it will change is he says that estimate the stresses at quarter of the span not at the center he says that estimate stresses at quarter of the span not at the center whatever the formula here we have written for mg and mq w square by 8 it is Bending moment at the center of the span. He says that to estimate the stresses at the quarter of the span, then you have to calculate moment corresponding to 
quarter length of the span. That is only the difference. OK, now what we'll do? We'll calculate MG. OK, MG and MQ at quarter of the span. The rest all values remains the same. Then we'll calculate the result of stresses with respect to two combinations. Pressure plus sulfate, pressure plus sulfate plus low load. Same combinations. OK, I hope uh, you understood. If you go through the second problem, OK, clearly, then you can uh, solve for the seventh problem. OK, I will not be repeating the things once again. OK, whatever the change in the solution that will be performing here. OK, change in the solution is calculate a calculation of MG and MQ at quarter of the span. OK. Now. Let me read the figure. For calculation of MG and MQ, self weight moment. You have to calculate self weight moment first. Self weight moment at quarter span. Remember, quarter span. Okay. Total length is given as 8 meter. Total length is given as 8 meter. Now I'll consider a section. So this is the mid span. I'll consider a section at the quarter span. Quarter span means total length divided by 4. OK. L by 4 is equal to 8 by 4. 2 meter. 2 meter. OK. Now sulfate of the beam will be same only. That we have calculated uh, in the problem number two. Sulfate, how much we, have, we got there? So cross sectional area is same. So cross sectional dimensions are same. Therefore, the sulfate of the beam will also be the same value. 1.12 kilonewton meter. Let me write directly here. The intensity of load is WQ is equal to 1.12 kilonewton per meter is the sulfate. OK. Now. We have to calculate. Moment at quarter span. Let me call this point as point C. OK, therefore. Moment. At quarter span is equal to. Quarter span is equal to nothing but moment at C. Moment at C is equal to Mg is equal to first you find the reactions at both the supports. It's a simply supported beam. OK, simply supported beam. Reactions will be WL square by 8. Reactions is equal to Reactions at support will be equal to what? WL by 2. W is 1.12 into 8 by 2. If you calculate, you will get 4.48 as a reaction. Okay, therefore, the reaction on either side I will write 4.48 kilonewton and 4.48 kilonewton. Now you can calculate moment at quarter span. OK, moment at section X6. OK, first you find the moment of this re reactive force or reaction about point C. So it is 4.4.48. .4 into perpendicular distance is 2 meter. OK, the sign is positive. Clockwise moment minus moment minus moment of this portion. 
about the point C. Comment of this portion of the UDL about point C. Okay. So intensity of UDL is 1.12. Y minus this UDL is causing anti glucose moment about point C. That is a negative sign minus 1.12 into the length of the node is 2 meter into perpendicular distance 2 by 2. By doing this, we'll get the answer mg. mg is equal to, we'll get it as 6.72 kilonewton meter or 6.72 into 10 power 6 newton millimeter. In the same fashion, you need to calculate mq. Okay. This is what the difference. In the second problem, he had asked to find resultant stresses at the center of the span. That is why it was W square by 8. But here it is not the case at quarter of the span. So we have to consider moment at the quarter of the span. Similarly, second step, live load moment, live load moment. Live load moment is, let me write the diagram. What is the intensity of the line load given? It is 2 kN per meter. 2 kN per meter. So on either side, reactions. Reactions is equal to WL by 2. So 8 meters is the span, total span. So 2 into 8 by 2. So it is how much? 8 kilonewton. So reaction on either side is 8 kilonewton. 8 kilonewton intensity of the line load is 2 kilonewton per meter. So at quarter of the span means at a distance of 2 meter, we have to find the moment. Therefore, line load moment at quarter span at quarter span is equal to mq is equal to 8 into moment of this 8 about xx 8 into 2 sin is plus clockwise moment minus 2 into 2 into 2 by 2 intensity of the UD is 2 kN per meter acting over length of 2 meter into perpendicular distance Perpendicular distance 2 by 2. If you solve the answer, you will get MQ as 12 kilonewton meter. 12 kilonewton meter or 12 into 10 power 6 newton millimeter. Okay. Now we have calculated dead load moment and the lay load moment. Dead load moment and the lay load moment. Okay. So the remaining calculation is same only, whatever we have calculated here. So this P by A and P by Z value, okay, remains the same. Only in place of 8.96 mg, you need to substitute mg is equal to mg is equal to 6.72, and in place of mq in both these uh, columns, in place of 16, you need to substitute how much? You need to substitute 12 kilonewton meter 12 into 10 power 6. Okay. Then if you're adding, if you add all the uh, uh, numbers for uh, pre-stress plus sulfate, you'll get the answer as you please you please cross-check the answer. Later on uh, you can calculate the answer for case A. Okay. So let me write the table type of stress. Type of stress. Then at top fiber. Bottom fiber. Okay. Now to bottom fiber. Here, first one is pre-stress. Pre-stress, its value is same. 2.15 only. 2.15 only. I'll write the answer directly instead of writing 
in detail. So here plus 2.5, 2.15. Then self weight stress, self weight stress. It it is also sorry. Uh, one more step is there in pre stress. It is there are stress and pending stress minus PE by ZT. Minus PE by ZT. It is also same. Minus 4 and minus 2.164. Same answer. Minus 4 and 2.164. 6.725. Uh, 6.25. 6.25. The answer is 6.25. Same answer I'm copying. 6.25. 6.25. This is due to pre stress. Then self weight here at the calculation uh, will changes. Self weight stress. That is mg by zt plus mg by zt mg. So here we have 6.72. 8.96 we have here, but here it will be 6.72. 6.72 into 10 power 6 divided by 4.855 into 10 power 6. If you calculate, you get 1.384. Okay, here minus mg by zb minus 6.72 into 10 power 6 divided by zb. We got it, it will be same only as like previous problem zb value. It is 3.104 into 10 power 6. If we calculate, you will get it as minus 2.164 minus 2.164. Then lie load stresses, lie load stress. Y load stress MQ by Z T MQ. How much we got MQ? 12 into 10 power 6. 12 into 10 power 6 divided by Z T remains the same. 4 point 8 double 5 into 10 power 6. Answer is 2.47. Then minus MQ by Z B. Minus 12 into 10 power 6 divided by ZB is 3.104 into 10 power 6. Answer minus 3.86. Okay. So the final answers we can write now. First one is pre stress plus self weight. Okay, result on stress due to the combination of pre-stress plus self weight. Okay, it is plus 2.5. Plus 2.15 minus 4. Then plus 1.384. Answer is minus 0.466 Newton per mm square. Here it is. Plus 2.15 plus 6.25 minus 2. Point minus 2.164. Answer is plus 6.24 Newton per m square. Second answer what we require is pre stress B. Pre stress. Self weight and lay load. So it is 2.15 minus 4 plus 1.384 plus 2.47 plus 2. Point. The answer is 2 Newton per mm square. Then here 2.15 plus 6.25 minus 2.164 minus 3.86. 
So answer is 2.4 Newton per mm square. It is 95% of the calculation is similar to the problem number 2. We just go through the problem number 2 in detail. Only the change is in the calculation of mg and mq that I explained here. The rest of the calculation is same only. Okay. So this problem number 7 is over. Next problem. Problem number 8. It is also on uh, an I section. Okay. It is also on I section only. Let me go through the problem. So for this particular problem, uh, the figure is given. Figure is given. Okay, let me read that. Figure, whatever it is given in the problem. Okay, figure is given in uh, in the problem. Let me read that figure first. This figure is given in the problem only. So the distance of the centroid is also given from both top fiber and the bottom fiber. Here, this distance is this is given as uh, twenty five mm, and here this dimension is given as forty mm. So this is what given in the problem. This figure is given. Okay, now we will go with the uh, understanding the problem. Uh, the I section is used to used as a post tension pre stress concrete beam over a simply supported span of 25 meter. It says that it is a simply supported beam having uh, the span of 
25 meter let me read the diagram simply support beam 25 meter that is l is equal to 25 meter okay determine the permissible uniformly distributed live load the beam can carry we have to find permissible uniformly distributed high load wq we have to find. for the following data initial pressure in the steel is given we have to find wq initial pressure in the steel is how much it is given initial pressure 1125 Newton per mm square. Initial. Sorry. Initial pressures is given as 1125 Newton per mm square. Then loss of pressures is also given 225 Newton per mm square. Loss of pressures. Loss of pressures. 225 newton per mm square correct huh? 225 newton per mm square so initial pre-stress okay when initially the beam is pre-stressed then at that condition the pre-stress was 1125 newton per mm square after uh, it is uh, uh, exposed to the working condition there is loss of pre-stress occurred there is 225 newton per mm square Okay, and therefore we can find the final pressures after considering the losses, correct? Huh? Therefore, final pressures is equal to thousand one twenty five is the initial in that loss of pressures is two twenty five. If you calculate, the answer is nine hundred newton per mm square. This is the final pressures. Then, what else is given? Permissible stress in concrete under working nodes is 17 Newton per mm square. Compression 1.7 Newton per mm square. Tension. Correct. The diagram I will write. Here. Yeah. So this is the reference line. Right. Along the cross section only. Relaxes. So this is the reference axis. What it says is um, permissible uh, stress in concrete under working load. 17 Newton per mm square compression. Where the compression will occur? At top fiber. At top fiber, the limiting stress is 17. And 1.7 at Bottom fiber tension means tension will occur at the bottom fiber 1.7. This is what the condition is given. Okay, this is F superior. F superior 17 Newton per mm square. F inferior is equal to 1.7 Newton per mm square okay this is what the condition given let me write f superior is equal to 17 newton per mm square then f inferior is equal to 1.7 newton per mm square next Moment of inertia of the I section about centroidal axis is given 15 to 10 power 9. I is equal to 15 into 10 power 9 mm raised to 4. What else is given? Area of cross section is also given. Area of cross section A. Area of cross section A is equal to how much it is given? It is given as 12 into 10 power 4. 12 into 10 power 4. 
Hey, Amen, Mr. Clerk. Okay. Now, what we have to find? We have to find the intensity of the UDL that can be applied on the beam so as to limit the stresses. Okay, compressive stresses to 17 Newton per mm square. Then tensile stresses to 1.7 Newton per mm square. The procedure of solving the problem is similar to similar to problem number six. Okay, we will follow the same procedure by taking uh, the two cases. Okay. First case is F superior and second case is F inferior. So F superior means maximum compressive stress. 70 Newton per mm square. And here <coughs> The cable details are given in the figure only. At the bottom, he has given uh, the cable area as 800 mm square. At the top, he has given cable area as 400 mm square. So the, by this, you, you can remember the total area of the cables. Correct? Huh? Total area of the cables. Total area of cables is equal to 200 plus 800. So 1000 mm square area of cable is given. Okay. Then uh, stress in the cable is known. Okay. The final stress in the cable. How much it is? 900 Newton per mm square. Stress multiplied by area of cable will give pre-stressing force. Magnitude of the pre-stressing force. Therefore, pre-stressing force Don't consider initial pressures. Consider the final pressures after considering the losses. Don't consider 1,000. Okay, 900 multiplied by area 1,000. Okay, by this we'll get the value of force P, pressing force, magnitude of the pressing force. 900 into 10 power 3 newton or 900 kilonewton. Okay. Now we'll consider the first condition. Okay. Case 1. Case 1. It is similar to problem number 6. Case 1. F superior is equal to 17 newton per mm square that is compressive stress okay so we know the formula for finding the f superior what is that formula we know that f superior is equal to e by a minus p e by z t then plus m g by z t plus m q by z t. Okay, that is given f superior. It is given as 70. Call this as equation number one. Call this as equation number one. Okay, now here you can calculate everything except the value of m q. Correct? Processing force just now we have calculated p is equal to how much it is? p is equal to 900 into 10 power 3 Newton. Then area of cross section, it is directly given in the problem. How much it is given? Area of cross section 12 into 10 power 4. Let me write it 12 into A is equal to 12 into 10 power 4 mm square. Then eccentricity is there. Okay. Now we have to calculate eccentricity. Eccentricity is not given. Correct? Huh? Eccentricity, it is not given that we have to calculate. Okay. What is the meaning of eccentricity? What is the meaning of eccentricity? 
it is the distance between the centroidal axis or the neutral axis to that of centroid of the precessing force. One more thing is here precessing force is there at both top and bottom of the beam. Okay. Therefore, first what we have to do is we have to locate what is the centroid of the precessing force. Okay. Somewhere here, if you assume, we have to locate what is the centroid of the precessing force. See if uh, the precessing force is given or precessing steel is given on only one side, directly the distance between that precessing force and the neutral axis. But here it is not the case. It is given on both sides. First, you need to locate centered of the precessing force. Okay. You need to locate centered of the precessing force. For that, write this headline as write the headline as location of CG of the cables. Location of CG of cables. We will locate it from bottom. We will locate it from bottom. Okay. So we know the formula. This we have done in uh, I think in first problem we have done this. In first problem also it is given uh, the bars, uh, precessing bars, or precessing precessing bars on both top and the bottom. Okay. Here we have done that calculation. Same calculation we are doing here. Now y bar is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2. Hold it by a1 plus a2. Correct. a1 and a2 are given in the figure. Area of processing wire at the bottom is 800 mm square. At top is 200 mm square. 800 mm square and a2 is equal to 200 mm square. Similarly, y1 and y2 are also given. y1 is equal to what is y1 distance of centered of precessing wire at the bottom from the bottom of the beam. It is directly 40 mm. y1 is equal to 40 mm. Then what about y2? y2 is Distance of centroid of distance of centroid of top pre-stressing steel from bottom of the beam. Okay, how we will calculate this way too? You calculate the overall length. Overall length you can calculate. It is 546 plus 424 minus this 25 if you do, you will get y2. Correct? Let me write the same calculation here. Sorry. y2 is equal to y2 is equal to 546 plus 424 minus 25. You will get 945 mm. Therefore, y bar is equal to 800 into 40 plus 200 into 945 whole divided by 800 plus 200. By this, you will get y bar, distance of center of the processing force. If you calculate, you will get the answer as 221 mm. You will get the answer as 221 mm. Therefore, eccentricity we can calculate. Therefore, eccentricity E is equal to means this y bar represents the centroid of the precessing force E is at a distance of two twenty. 1 mm from bottom. Okay. 
okay so what is eccentricity eccentricity is distance between this uh, centroid of the free stressing force to that of centroid of the whole figure or neutral axis of the figure okay now we want this e who will tell this e e is equal to this yb 546 minus this 221 distance of centroid of the figure is at a 546 from base distance of the centroid of the free stressing force is 220 m 221 mm from the base therefore it is 546 minus 221 if you calculate we get the eccentricity as 325 mm let me write the same calculation below e is equal to e is equal to 546 minus 221 is equal to 325 mm okay now eccentricity is known then what else is required in this formula eccentricity we call zt v is required zt is equal to what zt is equal to i by yt i is also given in the problem moment of inertia moment of inertia where it is given 15 and 49 and yt is a uh, 546 sorry 424 yt here 424 therefore i is 15 into 10 power 9 divided by 424 the answer is 35.37 into 10 power 6 millimeter cube okay so the t is now what else is required mg moment due to self weight is required that you can easily calculate self weight moment standard line self weight moment first you can get the self weight self weight of beam is equal to cross sectional area multiplied by density cross sectional area is how much is given in the problem directly 12 into 10 power 4 12 into 10 power 4 mm cube yes, sorry mm square is given so you need to substitute that area in terms of meter square now therefore it is 12 into 10 power 4 into 10 power minus 3 four square uh, the answer is 0.2 meter square therefore it is 0.12824 0. 2.24 so 2.88 km per meter wg is equal to 2.88 km per meter okay therefore self weight moment is equal to therefore mg is equal to wg l square by 8 2.88 into Length of the beam, how much it is given? 25 meter. 25 square by 8. 25 square by 8. Therefore, mg is equal to 225 kilonewton meter. Okay. Or 225 into 10 power 6 newton millimeter. So I think we have calculated all the required parameters. For equation one, only M Q is the norm. You can work out the answer for M Q by substituting all the values here in this equation one. Okay. Therefore, equation one becomes. Therefore, equation one becomes substituting all the values. P is nine hundred ten power three processing force. Final processing force divided by area, only into 10 power 4. Okay, minus P by Z T. P is 900 into 10 power 3 into 
Eccentricity is how much? Eccentricity is 325. 325 divided by ZT. ZT is 35.37 into 10 power 6. Then plus MG by ZT. MG is 225 into 10 power 6 divided by 35.37 into 10 power 6 plus MQ by ZT. MQ is the unknown parameter. 35.37 into 10 power 6 is equal to 17. So if you solve for MQ here, you get the answer as 403.51 into 10 power 6 Newton millimeter. Okay, or you can write in terms of kilonewton meter. 403.51 kilonewton meter. Okay. Now we have we have calculated the MQ lie load moment value by considering the first condition that is F superior maximum compressive stress value. Okay, 17 maximum compressive stress value of 17. Similarly, you can calculate the MQ value by considering F F inferior value. 2.7 newton per mm square. Case to now. Case to. Case to. That is, F inferior is given as 1.7 newton per mm square. What is the formula? So, and minus it is. Don't forget. Tensile minus. What is the formula for inferior? F inferior. F inferior is equal to plus P by A plus P by ZB, then minus MZ by ZB, then minus MQ by ZB is equal to minus 1.7 Newton per mm square. Okay, we know all the values except the ZB. We can calculate the ZB value now. ZB is equal to I by YB, moment of inertia, I is 15 to 10 power 9 and YB is how much? YB is 546. Therefore, 15 into 10 power 9 divided by 546, you will get that value as 27.47 into 10 power 6 mm cube. Okay, now remaining uh, values are known already. Previously, we have calculated. Therefore, equation 2 becomes. Therefore, equation 2 becomes P by A, substitute. P is 900 kilonewton. 900 into 10 power 3 newton divided by 12 into 10 power 4 plus P by ZB. 900 into 10 power 3 into eccentricity we got it as 325 divided by zb we have calculated just now 27.47 into 10 power 6 minus mz by zb mz also we have calculated we got it as 225 into 10 power 6 divided by zb 27.47 into 10 power 6 minus mq Lie load moment, it is only the unknown factor. MQ divided by ZB 27.47 into 10 power 6 is equal to minus 1.7. So MQ value we will get it as 320.22 into 10 power 6 Newton millimeter or MQ is equal to 320.22 kilonewton meter. Okay, now from both the cases, considering uh, the maximum compressive stress, you got uh, MQ as 403.51 kilonewton meter. Considering maximum tensile stress, you got the lie load moment as 320.22 kilonewton meter. Out of these two values, as I said before, we have to consider least value for the calculation of the lie load. Therefore, therefore taking taking 
लिस्ट नई लोड मोमेंट फ्रॉम द वैल्यूज ऑफ केस वन एंड ओके फ्रॉम केस वन वी हैव द वैल्यू ऑफ फोर जीरो थ्री पॉइंट फाइव वन किलोमीटर फ्रॉम केस टू थ्री ट्वेंटी सो थ्री ट्वेंटी इज द मिनिमम वैल्यू देर फॉर देर फॉर एम क्यू इज इक्वल टू थ्री ट्वेंटी पॉइंट टू टू किलो न्यूटन मीटर सो एम क्यू इज इक्वल टू थ्री ट्वेंटी पॉइंट टू टू इंटू टेन पॉवर सिक्स न्यूटन मिलीमीटर Let me take the answer in terms of kilo newton meter only. Okay, M Q is nothing but W L square by W Q L square by eight is equal to three twenty point two two. W Q is the unknown factor. Length of the beam, how much? Twenty five meter. Correct? Twenty five meter. Twenty five square by eight is equal to three twenty point two two. Okay, so if you work out the answer, you will get W Q as 4.09 kilonewton per meter. Okay, so we can apply a lay load of 4.09 kilonewton meter. We can apply a uniformly distributed load of 4.09 kilonewton per meter to satisfy the conditions given in the problem. That is, if superior. Maximum compressive stress would not exceed 17 newton per mm square. Maximum tensile stress will not exceed 1.7 newton per square. Okay, so the maximum medium to be applied is 4.09 kilonewton per meter. Okay, I hope you all understood uh, the problems which I covered in this particular session. So to this, I will end the class and we will continue in the next class.